Yo, what's up, gang? I'm Justo, and today, as you can see, I'm here with my first ever Elden Ring video on this channel. First of many, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. I can honestly say that I'm super excited to play this fucking game, and I honestly think that it could be up there for game of the year. But you know me, I don't want to make this video too long, so we're going to jump right into this. Why I'm fucking excited for Elden Ring on PS5. Really quickly, I just want to say, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and drop that subscription down below. Really quickly, it's free, it don't cost you anything. 98% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed, so why are you watching my shit and not subscribed, bro? Go ahead and help me out with that. But we about to hop right into this. We are officially in Miyazaki month. Elden Ring is like less than three weeks away as of the time I'm recording this video, and the hype is crazy. Um, I've been grinding some old Souls games, just went back and beat Demon Souls and started my new game plus, starting my first playthrough of the Bloodborne DLC. Obviously we're going to be streaming all of this daily on Twitch until Elden Ring comes out. Sifu also came out today so you're going to be seeing a little bit of that as well. But now to start off, this is basically going to be like a Dark Souls 4 or like a combination of all of the Soulsborn Ikiro series. Soulsborne Akira Ring series. On top of that, the game is going to be open world. This is going to be FromSoft's biggest Souls game yet. This is wild to imagine when you think about the scale and the map design that we already have in games like Bloodborne and games like Sekiro. I didn't get a chance to play Dark Souls 1 through 3, but I am going to go back and try to play that before Elden Ring comes out. Probably not going to get a chance to beat it, but I do want to go back and play them. Now, if hearing an open world Souls game doesn't get your fucking panties wet, I don't know what's wrong with you. But, moving on to the next point. Also, on paired with that open world biggest Souls game, we have probably the most movement we've seen in a Souls game. Besides Sekiro, uh, I would say this game has more movement than Sekiro because we actually have a mount. We have a horse to ride. Hopefully, now we haven't heard anything about this, but hopefully there's more than one mount. I know our horse has a name and his name is Torrent or Torrents, one of the two. But hopefully we can like find other mounts and maybe different animals as mounts as well. So you never know in the world of Elden Ring, maybe I can fucking have a baby dragon. But if we just have the one mount torrent, then I'd be happy with that as well. I'm also going to be making like a wish list video before the game comes out, probably sometime next week. They did bring back the jump mechanic from Sekiro and also the crouching mechanic from Sekiro, which I'm going to talk more about in the later parts of this video. Crouching introduces stealth to this game. The game really wants to promote different ways to play and different ways to tackle certain obstacles and not really force you to play as linear as some of the other games have in the past. You could play super aggressive, running in there with like a dual wield kit, throwing your summons down to distract enemies while you're behind them, hacking and slashing away. Or you could play pretty stealthy, also using your spirits to distract enemies while you go around and like scope out the, the scene and the scenario and maybe take out enemies one at a time and do it that way. You could also just rush in straight on horseback and just plow through all the enemies with like a lance and a bow or just straight run away. If I'm not mistaken, you're also not forced to play the game in a linear fashion. Obviously, this is an open world game, so you can go pretty much anywhere on the map at the very start of the game. Now, you might get stuck in some places, and some places might be overpowered for you, so that is why you're probably going to want to go ahead and explore a lot of the map and see what you can and cannot do. Now, that's really interesting to see that the whole map is going to be open to us to play at the start of the game. I really wonder how that's going to affect the progression of the game. But this is not like a new concept, like obviously in games like Demon Souls and Bloodborne, you can go to like different arch stones and different gravestones at, you know, you don't have to play it from one level to the next, you can kind of jump around each level. Now people did get to play the closed network test, um, I think it was like two months ago when that was live. Now that was about 10 to 15 hours of gameplay right there. And from what I've heard, that was probably less than one fourth or less of the game from what i've heard that was just one specific part of the map that was they were allowed to play and that was 10 to 15 hours so imagine 
that we get a full 30 to 50 hours of content exploring in Elden Ring. That would be fucking wild. DLC on top of that would make it even better. Again, the game is basically a Dark Souls 4, a combination of everything that these developers have learned. What I'm really excited for is just to see how they utilized components from multiple games to just make the best overall Souls games they've ever made. Now obviously we've learned to like expect deep detailed lore from FromSoft, FromSoft games. So this game is obviously going to be no exception. The game was also what co-written or like the character plot story, like the character story was written by George R.R. R. Martin. And I believe he is like the inspiration behind Game of Thrones, which is like one of the biggest series in the world and kind of set in the same setting as Elden Ring. That does nothing to that. Nice. Oh my god, he chill out, please. <laughs> oh my god, can you stop for a second? Oh my god! Oh my god! So George R. R. Martin was kind of instructed to go ahead and create a baseline, baseline foundation for the character's background, like their background story and how the characters relate to one another. And then Miyazaki went ahead and used that foundation and went and broke it down into the monstrosity, grotesque games that we have learned to love from FromSoft. Breaking these heroic deities down into demonic bosses. And I can't wait to play that combination of two great minds. I was actually going to talk a little bit more about why I'm excited for Elden Ring, but I can honestly probably go on for like an hour or two. So I'm just going to split this video here and then part two of this video is actually going to be coming out. If this video comes out Wednesday, then I think part two is going to come out like Friday or Saturday. So be looking out for that. But if you watch this video all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you and you're a beautiful human being. And if you're just as excited as I am for Elden Ring, don't forget to leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be dropping a lot of content over the next couple months when it comes to Elden Ring. And we're also doing daily streams over there on twitch.tv slash I'm Justo. A variety of games right now. We're playing Sifu, Bloodborne, Demon Souls. Elden Ring is only two weeks away. I still play Rust every wipe. So go ahead and go follow that as well for live unedited gameplay. But as always, I'll see you guys in my next video.